Good day guys, we're here at the club for Thursday's training session. It is 5.30, which means gym is about to start, so let's get right into it. Check, check, one, two, one, two. All right, here we go. Oh, sit up. Oh, sit up. So when I arrived at the gym, we were all doing dynamic warm-ups, starting with these oh, short sprints. Up. We did a lot of other drills, but I didn't capture them for the sake of time. So that's our dynamic warm-ups done. Heading into the gym now. Here we are all gathered around the board so that our strength and conditioning coach can show us what to do. Um, start with two legs. This is just a warm-up. What was that? Oh yeah, yeah. Alright, so here we're doing hurdles. In that first set you saw, I was doing double-legged jumps, but here we are doing single legs. Straight off the bat, I did my right side, which was the side that I had my surgeries on. And you could probably tell it was a bit harder, or that I struggled a bit. And that was my first rep with the left leg. Not only did it look smoother, but you could probably hear it was a lot easier. After doing a bunch of those on each leg, I moved on to the next exercise, which were barbell step ups. Three sets of six reps on each leg. I didn't know where to put the camera to get the best angle, but this was not it. So, unfortunately, you can't see the barbell on my back. But just so you know, we are using 70 kilos in total. Also, the idea here is to be as explosive as possible. Not going to show you all three sets of that exercise, so here's the next exercise, which I do not know the name of. In the first set, I used my body weight while doing 10 reps on each leg. Then for the next set, I held a 10 kilo plate while doing the same thing. Obviously, with the history of knee surgeries I've had on my right leg, there was a big mobility difference as I went down on the right side. Didn't go quite as deep on the right side. But let me know if you can see a big difference. I felt a bit of strain in that last set, so for my third set, I went back to body weight and decided to go explosive this time. At this point, I'm sort of changing the exercise because right now I'm side lunging instead of using the original form. Oh my gosh, did you hear that? Sounded like a wild specimen struggling to get one rep of a body weight dip. So unfortunately, I didn't capture that because I didn't know where to put the camera. But luckily, my man Anthony came along and picked up the camera for me. Fun fact, that rep that I struggled with was actually the first successful dip that I had done since 2020. That's four years ago. Now you might be wondering, aren't you doing successful dips right now? Well, yes, they are dips, but they aren't full reps. Because when I get to the bottom, I jump back up and then focus on the eccentric, or otherwise known as the negative. Here's my second set where I got a better angle. My goal is to try my absolute best to slow myself down on every rep as I go down. For this exercise, I did three sets of 10. Something I want you guys to know is that this training session was on Thursday and right now I'm editing this on Sunday and I am still sore from these dips. This next exercise is called YTWs. I actually really like this exercise because it focuses on the small muscles that you never train. More specifically, the lower traps and the middle traps. This also works the rotator cuff and a little bit of the rear delts. But as you can see, I'm using light weights because that's how weak these muscles are. Except, of course, the rear delts. It was supposed to be three sets of 10, but I was only able to fit in one and a half sets before it was time to go over to the field. Just finished up at the gym, and I'm definitely gonna feel those dips tomorrow. But yeah, we're about to hit the field. Hear the boys. So after our usual warm-ups that you've seen before, we split into backs and forwards. Here you can see us forwards doing our scrummage work. 
Here I am, training at lock, my least favorite position. The thing I'm struggling with the most is trying to manage my weight when the ref calls bind. This is when the locks come off their knees, which means all of our weight is being pushed into the props. I don't know how to manage this, so I'm pretty sure I'm making it harder for the props. If you've never seen a scrum before, this is how they usually end. Poor front row always eats grass, every time. One of these scrums actually collapsed because of me. I learned that if I give way, the props give way. And so basically what happened was that my knee hit the ground, probably because I was tired. And as soon as that happened, the whole scrum collapsed. All right, after scrums, we did some lineouts. Here I am jumping and there was a successful lineout. There were a few new trick plays that we learned in this training session. We're probably gonna need a little bit more time to get them right, but overall this training session was pretty interesting. Take a peep at one of the lineouts where I lift. Nice. Here's one more lineout. This time we're competing against each other as if it's the real thing. And it went well. I was able to slap the ball back while I was in midair. After our lineouts, we practiced our attack shapes. But I won't be showing them to you guys just in case somebody we might play against is watching. So after our attack shapes, the backs and forwards regrouped so that we could do some fitness. Once the fitness was done, we had a little bit of a rest and then moved into some real game practice. A little bit scrappy there. <laughs> Quite a tiring training session. Not only on the field, but the gym too. But after that real game practice, that was the end of the training session. Alright, so we just finished training. I'm about to do my first ever drop kick, drop kick attempt. And you're going to see it live from the sideline 22. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.